Hi everybody, I'm Deanna. We're here at the Caterpillar Edwards Demonstration and Learning Center and today we're broadcasting a series of machine demonstrations that really show our product capabilities. This is the second of seven demos we'll be doing today. Here with me is Chad. He's a field operations supervisor at the Caterpillar Edwards Learning and Demonstration Center. And he's going to be talking throughout this entire segment. Now, Chad, I noticed you have a headpiece on, and I think all the other operators do as well. So can you tell me what you guys are going to be talking about as we go through this demo? Yeah, so you're going to hear kind of a behind-the-scenes type of event here with our demonstrator instructors, and we call them BIs. So we're talking about our demo. We're talking about our movements. We're, we're making sure everyone's safe. Uh, we want to make sure we put on a good show for the customer. Usually we do these for customers and dealers. And uh, so we're just keeping in constant communication and working as a team as we always do. And the headsets really help because we get to talk back and forth. So they can hear everything that the narrator says. They can hear everything that they can say uh, to one another as well. And I can talk to, to them and help direct them if I see something uh, that maybe they can't see from, you know, from a broader perspective. So it's a really neat perspective in regards to what the, the folks on Periscope are going to see today. Totally different environment than what they would get if they were a customer sitting in the stands. Cool. Um, one of the other benefits that you're going to have on Periscope is that you can send us your questions and we'll ask Chad and he can communicate them to the operators as they're doing the demo. So I think this is going to be really cool for you. We're going to go ahead and kick it off, but make sure you hang out with us afterwards for a quick Q&A. Let's do it. So be careful. That 988, when you're cutting left, make sure your uh, your bucket's grounded and you're good. 986, don't run away from them. Excellent. Looks good, guys. Triple seven, 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 five. You're gonna go over the top of the berm. Copy that. And four. All right. Excellent. 992, go hit the rock pile and stage your uh, triple seven, please. Coming right behind you there. Double good fingers. Excellent. Looking good today, boys. Looking good. So remember, guys, they're all listening in. They want to hear what you got to say. So talk to the folks at home on Periscope. Online? Online. You better believe it. I can look at the I thank you. All right, 336 and 316. Uh, let me know when you guys are ready, please. Coming in hot, Josh. Excellent. Good job, boys. 988, what's your location? Right behind the rotate. 10 4. Back to Josh's. Uh, let's do this. About the time he's going back for his third bucket, why don't you come on in? 775, you good? Mr. Hayes, you're looking good on that 992 today, buddy. Thanks, Chad. Another day in the office, buddy. <laughs> Excellent. I nice. like your office. It's nice and comfortable in here. Nice V pattern. You bet. What is a V pattern? I don't understand what that means. Well, you see, I've been here in my shop face, big and straight into the face, and I've got the truck set up to my left at a 45. That's what I'll have to do is back out, go to the truck, and very little movements and shooting, and Keep the production cycle very efficient. So less movements means uh, maybe lower, lower fuel costs, lower owning and operating costs in regards to tire wear, machine wear, things of that nature? You bet. And also, I'm not traveling all over the place, so my cleanup, in case I do spill rocks, gets uh, minimized. What number, what number is that, Josh? This is going to be number two. Hey, all right, 988, why don't you head on in, old buddy? Roger that. Josh, what is the average cycle time for a 992? Around 32 to 34 seconds. 
All right, Chad, I'm going to make a clean up pass here in the loading area. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to find some other work to do after that. I appreciate the effort. Brian Kane got a pretty good drop off there in that 316, so be aware. 336, want to prep your uh, prep your pal there. 10 more. Looks good. Coming behind you, 336. Bring it on. 316, you're looking good there, brother. Don't try this at home, folks. There's nothing that dude won't do in an excavator. Well, I kind of like excavators. Dang yeah. it, like the Swiss Army. Right? Yeah, I heard that. I heard that. Yeah. I've heard that. Heard that before, Mr. Neal. Yeah. So, Brian, why don't you go ahead and pull a trench here, and we'll talk to you in a little bit about uh, some of the technology products that you're using. Dwayne, I know you've got something fancy on that 336, other than it is a hybrid. What else do you have on that in regards to technology? Hey, Chad, that's right. This is the XE model, so that makes it our technology model. We've added a ton of technology to this machine. Go ahead and bring that CT660 in here, and I'll uh, demonstrate some of this technology. So one of those technologies we have on here is called a CPM. So we have a scale system on our excavator that allows me to weigh, set a target, and actually weigh each bucket as I place it on this truck. So that way when I'm loading these trucks, I don't send him down the road overloaded and he doesn't have to worry about DOT giving me many tickets. So basically all the states and the federal requirements in regards to weight restrictions on the road, that technology on that excavator actually helps the truck stay in compliance. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. It also helps us track how much material we move throughout the day too. That's perfect. But you know what? That's not the only technology we have on here. Dwayne, are you being serious? I am serious, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> we have a can grade control on here, too. Now, this is not GPS or anything like that. This is all done with uh, onboard sensors on the machine. So with a good measure up and utilizing the sensors, I can actually pull depth and slope without the use of lasers or GPS or anything like that. So when I'm doing a trenching application, I can set a benchmark, and then I can program in the depth I want my trench, and also the slope that I want that trench on, and uh, the machine will do that. Well, give me the uh, depth and slope so I don't overdig and move too much material. That's so, awesome. There we go. We got that truck loaded. Perfect. Nice job, Dwayne. We appreciate it. CD 660, why don't you do, go dump that up top uh, by that triple side top. 316, you did a nice job pulling a trench there. You. Uh, is that like a utility size machine there, Brian? Yes, I would call it like a utility size machine, Chad. Perfect, sounds good, buddy. So, and, and Dwayne talked a little bit about some of the technology that he had on that machine. And even though that's a lot smaller machine, only a 16 metric ton machine, and Dwayne was on the 36 metric ton machine, it sounds like some of these technology products still bleed over even into the smaller ones. Is that right? Yes, you are correct, Chad. So utility or maybe just small construction companies may have one of these. So what I really like on this, it's called, uh, we've got the cat tray control on this, so it's all internal, it's inside the machine, um, there's some sensors, different things that are on the uh, cylinders that take readings, and then those pass back into the uh, into a monitor inside here, and I can run slope, or I can just dig a flat hole all by myself, without having a labor me or a laser transit, or anything else. And that's awesome. Well, Brian, I've seen some things that you've done with that uh, 316 on that cat grade control. It's pretty darn amazing. So for you folks uh, on Periscope there, Brian, Doug, and Amphitheater for us, we had a, a special group come in to, uh, to the facility here, and we did a little show for them in Brian, Doug, and Amphitheater where they actually sat down six feet in the ground and we stair-stepped it down. It was absolutely beautiful and all done with the cat grade control product. So nice testament to Brian's skill as well as the cat grade control. All right, that looks good. 420, why don't you come on in, please? Sure thing. Brian, why don't you go, uh, no, let's see. We need, a, we need a 257 here as soon as somebody gets a chance, all right? Good job. Josh, you're doing a good job slicking up on that motor grader, buddy. Thanks, Chad. You always do a nice job. I appreciate that. Why so, we call them velvet fingers. Velvet fingers, Sweet. absolutely. Brian, are you going back over that, that uh, bench there? Yep, we're going to go back over the bench. As soon as we get Mr. Velvet Fingers out of the way here, he's doing a fine sneak job. Buddy. Yeah, sneak buddy. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Yeah, you can't rush perfection. No, you can't. No, absolutely. You can't believe he's not yelling at me for tracking up a floor yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> that's the dang sick, man. <laughs> Excellent. All right, 420 FIT. Why don't you uh, pull us a little lateral there? I know, like in a 
Brian was talking about a utility contractor or small construction outfit. They use kind of a smaller machines and uh, maybe they're putting in a water line or an uh, electric line or something of that nature. And I know that 420 backhoe built down there in North Carolina is a perfect machine for a small utility contractor. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what the IT stands for and why these things are so beneficial to small contractors. Well, absolutely, Chad. Well, IT stands for Integrated Tool Carrier. So that means on the front, I can drop buckets, I can change, put forks on. So when we talk about it being the uh, utility machine, so we'll talk about it be kind of being the Swiss Army knife for the job, right? As everybody likes to say. Absolutely. So that means I can put forks on, I can put different work tools on, whether it's a broom, whether it's a buck, change different size buckets, whatever the case may be. I can change that at a, uh, in a matter of seconds rather than uh, having to pull pins and things of that nature. So that's what makes it more of a more of a utility machine on the job for a small contractor because as you look at it, the ground's a little hard there, isn't it? Speedo did a good job packing that back in. Absolutely he did. But uh, as you look at it, I can load trucks from the front with the front bucket and move material that way, or I can turn around and uh, dig, a, dig a lateral here. So if I want to put in some sanitary or uh, some water lines, I can turn around and do it from the, uh, from the uh, rear end there. Absolutely. The nice thing about that, boy, that ground is hard. Yes, it is. The nice thing about that F2 is uh, it comes down with a hydraulic coupler in the rear. Did you talk about that? Not yet. Yeah, that's one of the new features on this uh, on this backhoe is, yeah, we have a hydraulic coupler. So it used to be, you guys can see those pins. You have to beat those pins out. It might take a matter of an hour depending on uh, if those pins were seized in there or not. And uh, it take two guys to change that bucket. Now with the hydraulic coupler, I can simply swing around, pull the coupler, drop the bucket, Swing back around and pick up whatever work tool I might have. And I might have a uh, case of about six to seven different work tools I might be able to use on this machine. Perfect. All right. I tell you what, Clay, looks like you're really close to the end of your trips there. Why don't you take a couple more passes and then we'll backfill that. Sure and then thing. We'll get, get it ready for some uh, some grass seed, right? Absolutely. Great. I know uh, Josh is going to swing back around here in the motivator and help us slick up the floor. Hey, and Jack. yeah, go ahead. I, I found it impressive that. Speedo was able to compact the floor for the whole He hated that the other day. Yeah, he's, he's really fast. He's very good. Yeah, very good. Absolutely. That's the little fellow. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll so, so, Clay, we talked about ETS equipment training solutions. While you backfill that trench there, I want to bend you here a little bit. I know your expertise within the ETS world is waste. So, I mean, cat builds dirt machines, all kinds of machines, quarry, mining, but we also are in the waste industry. Tell us a little bit about what you do in regards to equipment training in the, in the waste industry, if you would. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, like you said, we do operator training seven. in the uh, in the waste business. So we make landfill compactors, 826s, 836s, so it allows our customers to get better, uh, we try to make better machines for them to get better compaction because the biggest thing in the landfill that we shoot for is the most important commodity is airspace. You know, a landfill's only got a certain uh, height that they can go before that landfill slows down. So the better compaction that we get and density of that waste, the longer that landfill can stay open. Sometimes if uh, an operator isn't doing their job right and they're not getting good compaction, then a landfill that might have a 20-year 20, 20 life might only uh, end up being filled up in 10 years. And that means that landfill shut down and then they got to try to find another place to go. So on the uh, ETS side, yes, we go in, we look at a customer's site, we uh, try to help them uh, make some changes, be a little bit more efficient, we work with their operators, we get them to work on better patterns, and try to achieve uh, better densities. Perfect. Did you know the client is called the Garbologist? <laughs> the Garbologist. <laughs> I, I did actually know that. Okay. We get a lot of nicknames around here, Mr. Hayes. <laughs> That's a great nickname, too. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm Deanna. Thanks for joining us for our last live demo. That was the second of seven segments we're going to be doing today. Here with me again is Chad. Um, he kind of runs the show out here at the Demonstration Center, and he's going to take a few of the questions that we saw coming in as we were doing the Periscope. So, Chad, you talked a lot about the operators and how they help train our customers and really work with them, but I don't think anybody can just walk in off the street and do this job. So what kind of experience is required for the operators, and how do they go about getting a position like this? Well, you're exactly right. It's not just any average Joe off the street. So basically, we require 10 years minimum experience in the field. So the way we look at that is it's got to be an individual who has 
come out of the field, worked with a contractor, mining, heavy construction, quarry and ag, whatever the case may be, and has literally fed their family by the skills of uh, their abilities to run machines on a regular basis. And we don't just ask for, or we don't just look for the average guy, we look for the creme de la creme, the best of the best, so to speak. And so then we take those fellas, or people, and we'll interview them, except we then ask to, uh, we drill down and look at their ability to communicate in regards to in a team environment, because team is everything here at uh, the Demonstration Learning Center. Uh, and then also we look at their ability to communicate with customers, uh, supervisors, whatever the case may be, because they're out there representing Caterpillar and they're representing the Edwards Demonstration and Learning Center team, which is really important to all of us. We're, we work really hard here. We're really proud of what we do. So we want to make sure that we have someone that's in the field putting our best foot forward. Well, you guys do an awesome job. Now, we saw a lot of different equipment in this demo. Can you tell me what's the benefit of one of the articulated trucks over some of the other? Mm, that's a good question. So we have straight frame trucks, which typically they will work in like a quarry or mining type situation, uh, where the roads are what we'd call improved. So they're maintained roads. We have motor graders. We saw Josh Velvet Fingers out there running a motor grader earlier. So he would be out there maintaining the roads for those straight frame trucks. So basically, it's, it's an easier ride, so to speak. An articulated truck, um, like a 740, 745, something of that nature, it works really well in unimproved surfaces. It also can work uh, in areas where um, maybe the weather isn't perfect. Maybe winter's coming or it's been raining or whatever the case may be. Those machines can work in a really, really uh, ugly environment and still keep production going. So you may use, uh, you can load a articulated dump truck with a wheel loader or an excavator or whatever the case may be. They're extremely versatile. They don't haul as much material as a straight frame truck, but they can go more places than a straight frame truck. Okay. We also saw the 336 excavator, and you mentioned that it was a hybrid. So what's the deal with the hybrid? Is it really that much different than the regular excavator, and how does that technology kind of work? Well, it's completely different, yet it's almost exactly the same. So what I mean by that is the 336 with the hybrid technology in regards to its lifting capability, its digging envelope, uh, its performance in general, it's identical to a standard machine. Now, when you look at the hybrid technology, it's really cool because it's basically hydraulic components that Caterpillar has used for years and years and years, except we've stacked them in different areas, in different ways. So now when that excavator swings, because obviously the house of that excavator, it swings left and right, an awful lot through a, uh, an average day. And in a, in a heavy truck loading day, it can swing up to 10,000 times a day. So in an environment like that, when you're swinging, you're generating a lot of energy. You'll swing to your left, you're generating energy. And then when you try to stop, that's, that's when most of the energy is, is then generated. All that hydraulic pressure goes back to two accumulators in the rear of the tractor. And we can use that force to swing back towards the right. So basically what we can do is we can save fuel by accumulating that hydraulic pressure and then propelling the machine back to the right or the left, whichever it may be. And you can save up to 25% on fuel with this uh, hybrid technology. So it's not a hybrid like we would look in the traditional car um, you know, sense. It's a different type of hybrid, but still a hybrid. That's awesome. Now, I know you have a lot of operating experience, even prior to coming into this position. So I'm sure you've seen the machines and products evolve over time. What are some of the new technologies you're really excited about that Cat's working with right now? Mm, there, there is Technology is kind of the new buzzword at Caterpillar. Uh, there are so many things going on, it's really hard to even keep up with all of them. So we've got hybrid technology. You heard the guys talk about grade control truck technology, uh, payload. So simple things that help the operator every single day. These guys are sitting in the seat 8, 9, 10, 12 hours a day, and it's a very fatiguing job. It's actually very taxing on you mentally and physically. So anything we can do to lighten their load, either mentally or physically, all those things really help production go up. Because as you all know, if, if the operator or you know the worker is comfortable, he's more he or she is more productive. So Looking at the payload system, so now we've got an operator that can monitor how much material he's putting on the truck. It benefits him, it benefits his uh, employer, it also benefits the truck he's loading. The cat grade control system, 
It helps the operator with his fatigue because he's not having to concentrate quite as much on where is his bucket at. You know, what is the dig depth? Where is he at? Does he, is he on target? Is he two inches off? Is he a half inch off? That cat grade control helps him. Plus, it keeps someone out of the trench oftentimes. So that's going to keep the laborer, the ground man, in a safer environment. He doesn't have to be right near the bucket. That's, that's a win-win, obviously, as well. Simple things like the motor grader that Josh was on earlier. So the motor grader, uh, the M-series motor grader, when we came out with that, we took 11 to 14 controls. We used to call it the piano bar. So the operator on an H-series motor grader, he had 11 to 14 controls, and he would have to manipulate them um, in the right fashion in order to get that machine to do what he wants. Now it's down to two levers. So the operator fatigue went or his effort in regards to running that machine reduced 70%. So in the course of a day, if I can do something 70% less, I'm going to be a lot more productive. So that's just a, a snippet of the technology that Caterpillar is currently working on, and it just it goes on and on and on. It's, it's amazing what uh, our engineers are dreaming up for these days. Well, it sounds like they've got a lot to offer and a lot that people can look into to really reduce their operating costs and make themselves more efficient. I really appreciate you guys letting us come hang out this morning. You're always so much fun. It's been a blast. You're not rid of us yet. We'll be back out here a little bit later on this afternoon to do a few more live demos. But at 12 o'clock today, we're going to head over to one of our facilities in Peoria, Illinois to visit the SOS Monitoring Lab, which really works with fluid analysis and it can help reduce your operating costs greatly. So if you're interested in that kind of information, you're not going to want to miss it. If you have specific questions about this demo or anything else you've seen, you can visit us at cat.com slash live. I'll see you soon.